Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Pop Review. I'm Sean. I'm Alex. And today we're reviewing Star Wars The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi, yes. arguably the largest pop culture event of the year. Um, or last two years, maybe. I don't know. I mean, so... No, I think it's the biggest, yeah. yeah. So since, since The Force Awakens, though. It's everybody's like, talking about it. I saw it once, you saw it twice. I saw it twice, yes. Uh, how many times did you guys see it? Tell us below in the comments. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know people... I actually do want to see it again, because... I recommend you see it again. I have a lot of different thoughts, so hang, hang with me here. Um, I've talked to a lot of different people about it. Yesterday, I was supposed to be working, and I spent all day at work <laughs> on Facebook, like, arguing with people about this, about whether it's good or not. Um, oh, by the way, this is a spoiler review. Yes. So, if you don't want to hear about anybody's demise, or... <coughs> Luke's! Oh, oh! Ah, okay, yeah, see, I already warned you. I already right. warned you. That's so, should be we're a, good. That, and it says in the description, you. spoiler, so... <laughs> that's on um, you. It's on you. Sorry. Yeah. So, anyway, navigate away if you don't know that yet. <laughs> you can't read. Um, Sorry. So, we're gonna be talking spoilers. So, yes. I literally spent all day on Facebook yesterday arguing about people. This is such a polarizing film. I think I w it's easy to say it's the, the most polarizing film, I think, since the prequels. And that's, I mean, that's there's only been two other movies since then. Are there people but... that think those are, what's the disagreement there? No, they're, they're, the they're, they're fans of the prequels, like big time fans. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Like if you I'm read... so glad that I don't have any of those people in my life. <laughs> well, I mean, I, not to get off on the prequels, but I think the, the ideas of the prequels were good. I just don't think they were executed really well. True. Like they had their moments where like they, that's the Star Wars we know, and then there's other parts where like <laughs> Jar Jar, where it's like, what the hell was George thinking? <laughs> Someone just please tell that man no. But um, fair enough. But this movie is very decisive. People either really like it, or they they didn't like the direction it went into. Well, okay, where should we start? Do you want to talk about the look of the film, the character arcs, the porgs? <laughs> Where do you want to start? Um, let's just let's go with like your general thoughts. Okay. Like... I was very conflicted watching this movie because some of the scenes were so good mm -hmm. and some of the things that they were setting up for the third movie and for the saga and for the mythology going forward were so refreshing and um, I was telling someone before the film came out, like, oh, what what kind of uh, spin-offs do you want to see? Like, do you want to see an Obi-Wan movie? Do you want to see... And I'm like, no, I don't want it. I don't, I don't want any of the characters that we know and love to be in any more Star Wars films. I no, just feel like I want... Yeah, well, yeah. Um, but, so that said, I do feel that there were so many moments in which it did feel like we were moving forward and moving away from these little Easter eggs, which to me, get a little annoying, because I don't need them. Like, everyone's seen Star Wars. Like, I don't need to be reminded that, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi's Leia's only hope. I really don't need it. Anyway, so I was conflicted. And then there were some scenes that just were so god-awful. And just weird. Not good weird. Not Star Wars weird. Like, out of place weird. Okay. Um, like, where did that come from weird? Jump the shark moment kind of weird. Um, so I really went through the gamut of emotions watching this film, like an inner conflict. Do I like this movie or not? And I still... I don't think I like the movie. I really don't think I like the movie. What I do like is some of the things that they're setting up, some of the things we're doing okay. before, some of the character um, information and development that we had. So what, what were your initial thoughts? Um, my initial thoughts, and we saw this movie together, um, is it felt like a s epic saga movie and we don't get those kind of movies anymore like we used to back in the day if and it also felt like the middle part of a movie where mm. it's really reliant on the force awakens you've had to have seen the force awakens if you go back to the original trilogy i feel like empire mm. for the most part is standalone it really like, does it, stand on its own it has ties obviously to star wars but empire Strikes back stands alone this movie though i feel like if you have, you can't just jump into the Star Wars universe and watch The Last Jedi because a lot of things are tied. Because obviously, this is yeah. one of the first Star Wars movies that picks up exactly where the last one left off. Pretty so, much exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like she so, hands the lightsaber saber. to Luke at the end of Force Awakens and she hands it. So it's a double action, really. We're yeah. actually starting like before the, the, uh, yeah, the movie a bit, actually yeah. ends, like a few seconds, because, you know, we see her hand the lightsaber mm -hmm. over, grabs it. 
tosses it. Toss it over. Yeah. Which is actually a pretty great way to... No, that was actually pretty <laughs> funny. Because, like, he just, like, holds it for a little and then just kind of toss it. Yeah. But for me, I, I, I felt, like, very heavy. Like, it was very... Really, oh, yeah. I won't say, like, emotional heavy, but yeah. just the fact, like, there was just a lot of things going on, a lot of things to absorb. Lots of process. That, that was, like, I'm happy I saw it again because seeing it the second time, mm -hmm. I just got to watch the movie, not kind of analyze the movie. Oh. And I appreciated it a lot more the second time around. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we saw it in 3D the first time. Um, yeah. Didn't like that. Um, I don't. I'm not a fan of 3D. So Just seeing it in non-3D, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, was was very helpful. So for me, I okay. enjoyed the movie the second time. Because I get because I, I knew it was happening and I could just sit back and watch it this time. Right. And a lot of the, the 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 tones I think they were trying to do actually sunk in better the second time yeah. than did the first time. Okay. Yeah. And well, along as long as we're talking about tone, I'd like to talk a little bit about theme, which is not exactly the same thing. True. Um, but that reminds me, I always like to talk about theme in these movies because I feel that if you don't have a theme, if you don't carry your theme through. What are you doing? I did feel a little bit like that with this film because I f did feel that they were working a couple of different themes that were tied in here and there. The biggest being this idea of balance, but I don't feel like they went all the all the way with it. Um, there's another theme of redemption as well, which is another big one that I really like, but I still don't quite feel that they handled that very delicately either. Yeah. Um, so. For me, the word that I keep using when talking about just sort of the theme and just the general uh, what to take from this movie is that it was very scrambled. Um, it didn't feel like there was a lot of nuance in terms of getting from one scene to another, um, in terms of tying these moments together in a way that was very graceful. It just kind of okay. felt like, okay, this is happening now. Uh, okay, now we gotta go get the we gotta go get the code breaker. Now we gotta go get the this guy. Now we gotta go do this. Now we get it just. I was like, oh my god, there's just like always some sort of goal that they had, um, and I feel like the goals were more important than focusing on what the movie was actually about theme-wise, mm -hmm. as opposed to plot-wise. Does that make any sense? Maybe. I mean, for me, I, I think I kind of agree. It did feel a little frantic, but I think the reason it felt that way because the, the, the whole idea of this movie was for them to survive and keep the resistance alive and for them to try to figure out a way because they're they're on the ropes like even more so I think in this movie than in Empire oh yeah and I just think like even in the crawler says they have to survive they're, they're struggling to survive and I think that's what this movie was that's why it felt very frantic and like oh, oh what do we do um, oh we like uh, it felt that way because that's where they're they're physically at this moment so that's why I, I think that's what they were going for for me it worked though hmm. Well, what I would like to see thematically in the next one is, you know, and maybe maybe I'm going to feel differently about this film once I see exactly how they wrap it up. Yeah. But right now, I feel like they didn't quite set it up to go in the place that I want it to go. Um, and the place that I would like it to go is to explore the theme of balance and that you can have good and bad inside of you and because that's a complete human experience yeah. like and that's what Luke was talking about when he says the Jedi should end that question or that statement was never really explored more than just the fact that he said it we don't know why he thought that we can guess why and it's because it's polarizing and well first of all Luke doesn't really understand it he's always been just so stubborn and well I mean <laughs> I think he just look at the history of it and like he says to Ray like at the height of the powers well, he, what yeah. did they ever really accomplish they pretty much created uh Darth Vader. They created they helped the create Empire. Him. Yeah. yeah exactly. And then they helped create the Empire. So um so I think he like his like he said, the the their legacy is failure. All they've ever done is set things up and fail to protect it. So mm -hmm. I think that's why he thought it was him because he tried he tried his hardest to bring it back and what did he do? He failed. failed. What did the Jedi do? Well, order they failed Anakin. So I think he just thought like their legacy is failure. Why would I try to um, continue something that's perpetually just going to end up failing anyway and bringing more harm than good? I agree with that. That's more of a character arc thing than I feel that it is playing to this idea of balance. I think Luke didn't really fully understand what it meant to say the Jedi need to end. I think he he didn't really know because he saw darkness in in Rey as well. He it scared him. Yeah. When, 
um, he was like in her mind, I guess, when she was using the force and she sort of went, tried to like kind of go down this path of darkness. Yeah. And Luke is like, oh, how dare you? You didn't even, you didn't even hesitate. And then walks away all dramatically because he's just <laughs> such a little baby. I love Luke. He's such a little baby. But so my point is, I don't think Luke fully understands what he's saying and what that means fully outside of the context of, oh, I just don't want to fail anymore. Or, oh, we're, we just keep failing. I don't think he really recognizes that it's okay to have some darkness in you, like no. Ray does. It well, scared him. But he does. He, but he has darkness in him too. Like he could easily yeah, exactly. um, went to the dark side himself and returned yeah, um, the Jedi, yeah. and he did. So you'd think that he would have a little bit of a better understanding of balance and have more of an idea of how to achieve that and what that means. Yeah, but I, but, I think the the Ben thing really like it scarred him really badly. Like that's that's his blood. Yeah. That literally, like, he thought, like you said, he thought he could train him and pass on what he's learned mm. on to Ben. And for him to fail yeah. in doing so, I think that really, that really, like, took out of him. Like, that's pretty much why he's like, I'm going to go to this island, and that's it for me. Like, what else could I do? If I can't even get my own family not to turn, what else could, like, what else is there? You know, poor so, me. Yeah, well, yeah, I, so I can, I completely understand why you would think that, that they need to end. Like, well, what else could he do? Well, let's continue talking about Luke then. Um, a lot of people are saying that they really didn't like him in this film. And Luke has never been likable. He's always been kind of a stubborn little baby jerk. Like, just kind of annoying, you know? We love Luke, but he's yeah. always been this way. He, he's always been this way. He's, uh, like, I actually think he played Luke better than he played Luke no, before. No, I, I like his progression because for me yeah. it's a natural progression mm -hmm. considering what has happened to him since sure. we last saw him in Return of the Jedi mm -hmm. to now. For me, I love the way his character has gotten to that point. It makes sense for me. Yeah. I just think people didn't like the fact that he was grumpy Luke the whole time. I, I think people thought he was going to be grumpy and then Rey would kind of like loosen him up and he'd kind of be like he was when we last saw him, mm -hmm. but that didn't happen. And for me, it wouldn't have made sense to happen. Like for me, it goes back to he was training Ben. Like yeah. that, he thought he probably thought that this was going to be the future of the Jedi. I'm going to pack. He's going to be the next Jedi. He's going to well, be sure, the leader. Sure, and it's his nephew too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, exactly. And for him to fail that that badly, where like not only did he turn, he turned. Um, we had the Knights of Ren. He burned down the academy, killed all those pad. Um. They're probably younglings again. Um, for him to fail that badly, I can understand why he would be grumpy and secluded and like, no, I don't want to train you. I don't want to take this on again. I kind of left that behind. I fail at that. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, yes, you have power, but I'm afraid of it because I've seen that power before. He even said that. So mm -hmm. for me, him being grumpy and like reluctant and being grumpy the entire time, for me, it made sense. Yeah, it did work. And I think people are just concerned that it sort of, and I, I felt this way a little bit too when I was watching it, that it, it teetered that line between um, making sense for the character and being a trope, right? The whole yeah. the whole master not wanting to train, train yeah. thing. I think that might be, you know, and I, I did feel that a little bit while I was watching it, and I think that might be what people are kind of annoyed by, is just sort mm -hmm. of like, oh, this, this tropey idea. But he his arc does follow through, yeah. you know? And that his story is a story of, of redemption, really, because yeah. he... He feels like he failed. He failed Ben. He failed himself. He failed failed the Jedi, Jedi Order yeah. um, because he's been so cut off from the Force. Like you know, he can't even see his buddy Yoda for a while. Like that was the first time <laughs> I imagine that Yoda popped up. And was like, hey, that's a terrible <laughs> Yoda impression. But but I, but I think uh, oh, for you, I I I we're talking we're talking about his arc, yeah. and um, I, I thought that worked really nice. And however, I will say we can talk about his death really quick. Yeah. <laughs> That didn't work for me. I just, first of all, I thought it was really cool that the Force is doing these new, we're seeing the Force doing things that we've never seen it yeah. do before, and like, thank God, something fresh. So he astral projected himself um, very, like, planets away, yeah. like, across Maybe space. Maybe systems away, yeah. So, but, you know, he just astrally projected himself to death, and that just was kind of a weird way to go. And also, I do feel that the... Death right after redemption, um, trope or a storyline, yeah. only really works for pseudo villains or, you know, like he, I, I it just didn't work for me. The it didn't work. Well, I think um, well, and and to go back with the tropiness. I think it would have been trope if he would have been grumpy 
and then Luke, I mean, then Ray kind of turned him, and he's like, oh, like, Brett and Bush did. That would have been tropey for me. I don't, I wouldn't have liked that. No, that, but, it's fine the way they did it. I just wish that we would have gotten a little more time with him before, he, and we oh, may still, I, as a ghost. Oh, I think, yeah, he's definitely coming back in the next one, as a force ghost, for sure. Force ghost. But I, I and I force agree with you, I wish they would have had more time together trading, which that's one of the things I didn't like. Yeah. But... Um, for me, I like the fact that we, you know, like you said, we're seeing the Force do more things, and for him to have that kind of, he pretty much just absorbed all of his power to actually project himself, and just to prove to himself that yes, Lu um, Ben has gone all the way over. Yeah. Even though Ray kind of like, no, there's a little bit light of him, and I think Luke is trying to say like, no, Ray's the future now, not you. Mm. Like you've completely gone over. Yeah, I think that was him dying. Was just pretty much saying like I'm leaving in a in a good place. There is I'm not the last anymore. Where I think he he pretty much was on that island thinking like I'm when I die it dies with me. Now he's thinking like all right when well, I'm about, when he was looking out to that sun just like he did in in Star Wars the end of Star Wars he's looking at the horizon thinking like now there's the Jedi Order can go somewhere maybe. Right. So that's interesting too because we actually saw three sacrificial deaths. Yeah. In this film, we it started with Rose's sister. Mm -hmm. um, she sacrificed herself to drop the payload. Um, we saw Laura Dern <laughs> and Luke. Yeah. Am I missing any? Maybe there's more. No, I mean, well, sacrificial does. I mean, there's a lot I mean, of deaths in this movie. Well, but, deaths, yeah, but yeah. Th those are the three sacrificial yeah, deaths. So that's also sort of this theme that's going through, like, um, you know, giving up your own well being, your life, even for the greater good of the cause that you believe in, which is a little bit lame, like three times in a row, I'm just kind of like, all right, we, I got it. And you know, I, I think we could have gotten away, we don't really care about Rose's sister, so that's kind of, that's fine, yeah. um, and it sort of sets that whole idea up, but we didn't need both Luke and Laura Dern. I, I think it should have been Leia, honestly. Well, we, well, let's talk about that moment really yeah. quickly. Well, I, for me, I think the reason it wasn't Leia is because she's there to kind of pass the baton to Poe. And the reason the, that Poe and Leia's dynamic was the way it was is she's trying to get him to understand, like, just like she says, you just can't jump in an X-Wing and just I, do things I, I and without thinking about it. You have to think of the big picture. And then the big picture was them trying to survive, not just doing things in the moment like them destroying the Dreadnought. That was great in the moment, but in the long run, what did, what did it cost them? It cost them all their bombers and people died pretty much for no reason. Them destroying that Dreadnought did absolutely nothing. So, like, Leia's trying to convince him, and eventually at the end, he gets to that point, that you have to play the long game, you have to look at the bigger picture. Like, yes, killing, destroying this dreadnought would be great, but what will it cost us? Is it worth the cost we'd have to pay? Right. I just think it would have been better if Leia... I think it would have gotten the point across even stronger if Leia was the one who sacrificed... The princess was the one who sacrificed herself, and sort of... Because it was her relationship with Poe that was sort of... Um, going back and forth, exactly what you just said mm. about like I'm trying to tra I'm trying to teach you, you know, and he wasn't getting it, wasn't getting it, no. wasn't getting it. So I felt like it just would have made way more sense for Leia to be the sacrificial lamb, and that would have been a really beautiful way for her to go out. Go out. Granted, obviously they didn't know Carrie Fisher was going to pass, yeah. um, so well we don't get her in the next one anyway. No. But I yeah I just felt like that would have been the stronger choice, and also we don't care about Laura Dern. I mean I care about Laura Dern, and no, her hair is on point. <laughs> but. Who is this? What is this? We're just like, she's thrown into the movie like in the last, you know, yeah, 45 I mean, minutes and I'm supposed to care and she has this weird, um, really emotional moment with Leia that took like an awkwardly long time and they're like, and they're like holding each other and it's just like, yeah. what the fuck? But like, I don't care about this relationship. Why is this in here? Well, I mean, because, <laughs> bizarre. Like, because they have a past that we haven't seen that, but the characters have had, had a past. I know that. But, but I think Laura Dern is just, because I think if they, like, there's no way to know Carrie Fisher was unfortunately going to die, but I agree with you. If, if hindsight was 2020, that would have been a great way for her character mm. to go out. Right. But obviously they had more plans for her because she was supposed to be in episode nine. And maybe, God forbid, something would have happened to her, her character in that movie. Mm. But we, I mean, like, their hands are kind of, were tied. But um, anyway, Laura Dern's the, character was just there just basically to make that sacrifice. Exactly, which felt completely forced to me and didn't work because I don't care about her. I don't know who this person is. And she's acting kind of like a bitch. So <laughs> well, she's supposed to come off that way, especially with Poe. Like, I don't know, like I, no, you're a coward. Really, like, no, you're just going to, like, because again, her and Leia are seeing the big picture. Poe's looking at it at, at a macro, 
I, I get so, it. I just don't know why you needed two characters to be teaching Poe the same thing. Like, uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I guess yeah, maybe sure. they, they have, might have had plans for Leia that we don't know. And we'll never we'll probably never. Yeah, we'll probably never. Know. Um, anyway, so there's that. Uh, well, well, speaking of Leia, uh, obviously I know a lot of people are going to talk about um, when she blew up the deck. Oh, God, you know. That was so bad. It was so weird. And actually, um, the first shot... Um, you can see all the debris, and, yeah. I was, and I thought I saw like a. I'm like, oh no, they're gonna show Leia, aren't they? And then they didn't, and I was like, oh thank God. That I'm thinking this in my head, honestly, yeah. when the explosion happens. I'm like, oh thank God they didn't do that. That would have been just the worst. Cut to <laughs> Leia floating, floating, and I'm like, and they did it. They did it. I remember what I Why? told you. Remember I told you, it looked just like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, um, yeah. Both in both movies where there's a character floating in space, uh. but. And a lot of people think like, well, she had, like, how did she do that? So apparently, I was reading okay. online that, um, well, obviously we know she has force powers. We know that. Yes. So apparently what happened after Return of the Jedi, she's been doing, and I think they've explored this in books hmm. or in the comics, but oh. she, she, Luke did start to train her. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she didn't pick, uh, continue it because she's like, the, um, she had to be a senator again. Yeah. And she had, mm -hmm. she had responsibility. She didn't finish her training, but she did get training. And apparently before... The explosion happened. She did put a force bubble around her to protect her. That's why she didn't die, and then that's why she was able to float back to the deck. Well, afterwards. that's great if you're like severely in depth with the canon, like the yeah. books and the comics, or you know whatever else is out there. But for you know your average fan, and I do love Star Wars, um, so maybe I'm a little above average in that way. But uh, that that didn't make any sense to me at all. No, you're uh, right. And like I said, I like that they're doing different things with the Force we haven't seen, but that was so bizarre. And it was even weirder because we were on her face. She's like dead, right? And we're on her face for what felt like minutes. And we know Carrie Fisher's dead. And it just, I was just cringing, like, oh, and then, and then her eyes open, and I'm like, no, well, okay, she's alive. She, the vacuum of space, though. All I could think about was, like, her eyes, like, probably, like, exploding out of her well, the, head. There's a, there's a bubble around her. That's why it sure. didn't happen. Well, they should... I mean, okay. I don't know why but, we needed... But I don't the know movie why we did, needed that at all. The movie didn't explain it very well. No, and also, why did we Which need Which is fine. That? Well, I, I, for me, I think it was just the idea of Leia f showing that she has powers. Because we've never really seen her... They use really could the have force, done that any the other force. way. They could have had her like bake a cake with her mind, like. But something again, that more was part of delicious. that was part of the reason why then for her to take a step, uh, naturally in the story, for her to take a step back for Laura Dern's character to take a step forward to see someone else kind of show. It just seems like way too much. Like they could have just kept it real yeah, simple. That's like, fine. But it was I'm emotional sorry. when Luke was talking to Leia at the end. It was. We don't really. No one ever really dies. And was like. Oh yeah! Oh god, that moment. Uh, uh, got the feels uh, right there. I, I like, honestly mm. like I was crying a little. Yeah, bit. a little bit. I was like, oof. Yeah. That's true, but <sighs> it, it hit a little home. Oh man. man. What are the, okay? There are a few, there are a few, let's let's talk about a few more things that really did not work for me. Let's talk about this casino planet. Which was really hyped up. I felt so much. Really I felt up. like I was back in the prequels again. I was like, or well, the way it this, looked. Uh, just uh, some of the creatures were, well, CG for one. Mm -hmm. um, there were some. There was some good puppetry also in the film, which I really appreciated. I'm like, oh, good. I'm glad they're you know back to that aesthetic because it really does work for the film. CGI animals. I don't feel does. Um, but there are a few CGI, and there's the guy who's like at, on BBA, and he's like drunk, and he's like putting <laughs> coins in it. Yeah. I'm just like, no, it's like we're back in the prequels, and I want to die. Like this is the worst. Like what they should do if they want to do more shenanigans with BB-8 is just ha give him like a short, give him like a 15 minute Oops. BB-8 short, and oh, like I... release it on YouTube or before the next one or whatever it is. I don't want that in the movie. <laughs> Well, I, it was so dumb. It, it felt like like they're really pushing BB-8 hard, and I'm like, yeah, like we all love BB-8. You don't have to push him that hard. Like even like the fact that he's like saving them all the time, in if, in different ways than obviously R2 used to save everybody in the in the originals. Yeah. Um, but in they're really pushing BB-8 really hard, in the, and also pushing R2 in the corner. Yeah. I'm like, you don't have to push R2 in the corner for us to love BB-8. I think. 
we can love both droids equally. We don't. It's not like one or the other. Yeah. I feel anyway. Yeah, it's like picking your favorite child. You can't do it. Yeah, but <laughs> obviously their favorite child now is BBA. It's like, oh, we had an older child. Now we have a younger child. We love the younger child. Now. I know exactly what that feels like. I have a little brother. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the casino planet, it, it was a cool concept, but then it turned into this really strange, like, um, Oh, hokey. Pitch on, it, well, it was hokey for yeah, and what it the, and there's these weird horse things, and I and it was all, all about saving the horses all of a sudden, and I was like, uh, what the hell? Like, wait, what? It was like the weirdest B plot. Uh, like, you yeah, know, I, it's like I got it. They they went there on a mission, but like shenanigans ensue. Yeah, and then of course. They, they, they have to, to get, free they the have horses. get captured, and then they, they meet the kids, and uh, I was like, um, and Benicio de Torres character, that that little accent thing he was doing like that little you probably freaking worked on I was that like, for that, like I months, didn't like that months at all I was in like your character does not need that I don't know like if Ryan Johnson told him that or he's so like hey I think my character would be quirky and cool if he had this little tick thing I'm like um I didn't like it his character I I'm curious to see if he's gonna be the new Lando or yeah that's exactly what I thought too I was he, like oh, he how comes Lando back to save them because yeah. it's convenient for him I think I one. I think so I think so. Yeah. Also very tropey. But again, um, he didn't leave that much of an impact instead of them betraying him. His character, we didn't get a lot of his character. Like, we, we got a lot of, we got a good sense of Lando in Empire. Mm -hmm. And then you can see why he made the decisions he made. In this, uh, DJ, as he's, his character is called, we don't really know what his name is. That's what his title is yeah. in, in the credits. Um, we don't know what his motivations are. He just thinks Maybe. like, well, you know, there's, they're not really good guys and bad guys. They're just, they're just guys. And then which what, feeds you do into this whole idea of balance once again, yeah. which actually I which I picked up on, and I was like, oh, actually, okay, they're reinforcing the theme. That's actually really nice. But then by the end of the movie, the theme went out the window. But we'll see what happens in the third one. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the Casino Planet. No. Nah, no. Nah, nah, I didn't get like it. Just like just get out of here. Just grab them. Get out of here. Whatever. And I like the B plot, like the love triangle or quadruple triangle that we talked about after we yes. saw it, where it's like, ooh, who's gonna get with who? Well, <laughs> Rose loves uh, Finn. Yeah. Finn loves Ray. I think Ray loves Poe. And Poe's like looking at Poe's like, hey, looking girl, at Poe. Yeah, Poe's like, hey, there's no. At Poe. I f I f I'm with the team that's going with Ray because that better stay everybody Ray thinking like it was, it was Poe and Finn. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that, no, that scene was there for them to say like, hey, no, Poe's interested in Ray. And Ray looks like, hey. So, so a D plot, C plot, whatever. I don't know. There's just such a, so much going on in this movie. There's something like, there. I don't know. Uh, what else? We have, um, okay, so the casino planet did not work for me, but... The Porgs? Do you want to talk about Porgs? Oh lord, Porgs. We're not going to talk about Porgs for a second here. I read a really interesting article, yeah. um, or I was told of an interesting article that informs us of why the Porgs are in the movie. And I always thought it was just like a marketing thing. Like, they yes. need to sell something cute. Um, in this article, it, apparently that's not the case. Interesting. The island that they were shooting on, um, or I don't know if it was... An actual island. No, it is. But wherever they okay, wherever they were shooting, there were puffins, a species of puffin that lived on the island. And because they're endangered, that you know they couldn't really do anything to like obviously move them from the island or get them out of the shot. And this reeks a little bit of bullshit to me because I I'm I am in this industry and I'm trained in it a bit, not so much in visual effects, but I have a working knowledge. Apparently, they weren't able to remove the puffins from the shot. As okay. they're flying away. Oh, okay. They couldn't remove them digitally, which, in my mind, I'm like, that's utter bullshit. That's complete bullshit. Like, you can have Leia floating out in space and you can't remove a puffin from a rock. Anyway, so what they did is instead of removing the puffins, they, they added on to them to make them look like porgs, which... To me, seems like a lot more work because now all of a sudden they had to be in the story in this, like, C-plot in which Chewie becomes a vegetarian. <laughs> and uh, so I don't know how truthful this article well, really is. Um, I'll link it below if I can find it. Um, well, well, it like, well, well here's the thing. If it's true, then they possibly, well, well, if we, if they're already in the shot and we can't physically remove off the island because that's a sacred island, they're, they're only really allowed to shoot there for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, they were like, well, this could be an opportunity for us to put some some funny stuff in it. That just sounds like way more work. It's Disney money. It's, it's, who cares? So, um, for me, it, 
they were only in it really for that shot with Chewie, and then uh, uh, everything else was just them in the background, which they didn't bother me, so it's fine. But for me, it's like, Chewie obviously killed those two porgs. He killed them. So what difference does it make if he ate it or not? He already killed them. Yeah, I so don't want it to, you want it to die in vain. Like, exactly, let us contribute Chewie. to society. Eat the pork, eat it, just eat it. Eat it. Oh my god, it looks so delicious. It did. Yeah. It's like and gold. he felt bad. It's like, oh my, I can't eat Juicy. this thing. It looked, like he yeah. glazed it and everything. It looked like it was a nice rotisserie pork going on. And he didn't eat it. It was like, well, you wasted it. Come on, they're starving. <laughs> There's probably other Wookiees out there starving, Chewie. You just throw away good pork meat. Yeah. Shame on you. Yeah. Uh, man. Look like so, good pork meat. <laughs> so conceited. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's what I have to say about Let's talk know. about Ray. They're not cute. Let's also, talk about Ray. Just leave me with that. Okay, let's talk about Ray. Let's talk about Ray. Ray. I like Ray. I I really really like what they were doing with her exploring the dark side yeah and this sort of relationship they were building with her and Ben um, I just love that and that's the kind of character that I'm really interested in and this this conflict right mm -hmm. inner conflict that works so well for me but yeah especially I don't in Star Wars. I don't feel like they went far enough with it and once again we'll see in the third one what happens but I, I was really disappointed by the end of the film um, because she's just like, no, I'm all good. I'm a Gryffindor, you know, and, <laughs> and Kyle, you're a Slytherin, and there's nowhere in between, and I'm a Hufflepuff sitting over here, and well, I was like, there's totally an in-between. Well, she, she thought there was something there. Like, she thought there was a, 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 she, you know, obviously she got manipulated, but she thought there was a part of him that didn't change, it, especially when she heard the real story mm. on, on how he betrayed Luke. I think she thought, like, nope. There's something there, and if I if I go to him, I'll be able to to get him to, to turn. Yeah, or not even turn, but like I think she just wanted to find out. Like she was curious, more curious, because she because Luke didn't do a very good job of telling her exactly like what the Force is, and like didn't really train her all that well. So yeah. I think she has this curiosity, and that's why she stole the books, um, the yeah. the Jedi books, because um, she wants to know more, and I think. She's curious about her new powers because she really yeah. like. Remember, we picked up just where the last one left off. Like this is so completely new. Yeah. Like, if I all of a sudden had telekinesis, I would be like, uh, "What does this mean?" And I would be go looking for answers every day. Yeah. So I think I think she was more curious. You know, obviously she she's inherently good, but to me it came off like she was just more curious about. No, of course, and I think that's why she she said that's why she went into the cave to try to get answers, mm -hmm. and she thought the cave would reveal to her. What her true or the real question she had was, who am I? Where do I come from? Who are my parents? What is my place in all of this? And she tried. That's why she really wanted to look to train her so she can get all those answers. And for Kylo to say like your parents are kind of just junkers that just kind of abandon her, I don't believe that that's true. I don't either. Like I, I honestly to God think there's more to Ray than what we already know. I agree. So I think in the third one they're just going to. Um, reveal that whatever it is, whoever true parents are, because we didn't see them. We thought we were going to. We thought that moment where she was looking in the mirror, and then they were gonna uh, reveal to um, them to us, kind of like in Harry Potter, mm -hmm. when like uh, Harry saw her, his parents in the mirror. Yeah. I thought we were gonna see um, Ray's parents, but they didn't do that. Because I think there's more to uh, to Ray than meets the eye for she's, now. She's her own parents. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking before uh, we started the review about like what crazy stuff they're gonna do in the third one. We're like time travel. Yes, Ray is her own grandmother. <laughs> or the or maybe she was uh, created by the Force, just like how uh, Anakin was. I just she's she, her parents aren't junkers. That's that's as much as I would put money on the bank that that's not the case. Yeah. I think Snow kind of planted that in Kylo and in her mind that. What they saw was that, but I don't think that's really true. I think there's, for whatever reason, they're hiding the truth for her for whatever reason. I don't know. Well, I like the idea that, you know, she's really driven by um, her identity and her place in all this. Yeah. And who her parents are. And, you know, she's seeking these answers that she, you know, and then she gets them and doesn't like what she hears. Or in the case of the four, she doesn't really get a lot of answers. Um, no. so, so I just really like her character. I think she's she's written really well. Yeah. She's probably the one of the better written characters. Yeah. Um, I, and I just like her development as she's gone through it. Like when, like when we first see her till like the end of this movie, she's come a long way. Even though the, in the amount of time 
a lot now of time has passed, but she's gone. She's starting to believe in herself and trust in her abilities, and now she's trying to. F she's slowly revealing that she's found her place a little bit. Well, I think she sees the path to an answer. And yeah. She's you know she's a little bit stubborn too, like Luke. So she's like going for it. She's like, no, you have to train me. You have to help. You yes. have to you know. She's like she sees the end of the tunnel, you know, and. Uh, just like how she was like telling Luke, like, no, there's good in him, there's good in him, just like you saw good in Vader, there's yeah. good in Kylo, there's good in Ben. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm very curious to see exactly, like, she is the biggest question still going forward, mm -hmm. is what is Rey, and, like, really, just like how she thinks, mm -hmm. what is her place in all this? Because all, all, all these movies really have been focusing on the Skywalker lineage, mm -hmm. like Anakin, Luke, now Ben. Where does Rey fit in that going forward? We still don't know the full answer. Right. And I think this movie kind of put to bed that um, Ben being redeemed. We know now he is completely on the dark side. There is no coming back. And I know we're talking to you before, you kind of wanted that. And the movie kind of made us think that <laughs> there might be a way for him to turn back to the light. But him, like when he had that uh, confrontation with Luke, and Luke pretty much said, if you strike me down, I'll be with you forever. If you strike me down in anger, and he did that, not knowing that was astral projection, that pretty much said to me that now he is completely unredeemable. I thought he was unredeemable after killing Han, but he's definitely unredeemable now because he pretty much would have killed, he probably tried to kill Luke. He would have killed Luke. So um, for me, he's done. Now where does Rey now fit is in this with Ben is, is the kind of the biggest question. For well, me. and that's why I hated what they did with Kylo at the end there. That, that, they... Oh, I liked it. I hated it because now, where do they go now? Now he's just the, the evil villain. Now there's no villain. We'll yeah, talk about, is. we'll talk about Snoke next, yeah. but like, but like, yeah, you're right. They completely, now there's no relationship for them to have whatsoever. They, they completely threw that out the I, window no, and they I made him all bad. No, but I don't think so because I, I still think they're good. They have, now because they have that connection now. And I think that's what they're, that's the playing with it that they're going to have. Because I think... Um, like a Voldemort Harry kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. But, but that's, that's boring. Um, it's a plot device for us to be able to, like, for the characters to be able to see what the other is doing. It's, this is a plot device right now. We'll see what they do with it, but yeah. for me, that's what it is. And I talk about this all the time when we do reviews. I love villains that have humanity and ask questions and have even have like some motivation for doing what they're doing outside mm -hmm. of the fact of just being evil which we talked about in Justice League was like that's why the villain to me was like so weak was like oh I'm just evil for evil's sake I want to be all powerful and it's like that doesn't work for me in a villain which is why I like Ben so much and which is why I felt like we needed Snow because he is just your overarching Stereotypical Twilling villain. his mustache. And Kyle's conflicted, and I loved that about him. I did, I did like the fact that he, you know, at the beginning when he was going to shoot, excuse me, the ship, and he hesitated and he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, I like yeah, I like that part of it. So nice. Yeah, so and, I, and I remember like, turning to you like, because yeah. he knew I, we talked about this, yeah. and I'm like, he's gonna no, he's gonna he's gonna be good. He's gonna be like a, just a and little bit like, good. Like he's gonna be like I was a like, Loki I'm not buying it. I was hoping know, but, he would be more like a Loki character, right? Like if he didn't kill Han, it, 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 that would fit. That would work. But for me, killing Han, that was just there's no coming back from that. And then now him basically trying to kill Luke. Or basically, he he tried. He killed Luke almost. Um, if you want, if you want to be technical about it, yeah. um, he's he's now completely on that side. Yeah. And I think Ray is still figuring things out. Mm, I don't know. She seems. She, I don't think resolute. they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna make her go. She's not gonna turn to a dark side. But I think she's not fully. She's not fully a Jedi yet. She's just figuring it out. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'd like to see a great Jedi or something like that. You know. Um, could, could be right. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, now as long as we're talking about villains, let's talk about Snoke. Snoke yeah. <laughs> um, the way the Let's way start. the Force Awakens set him up, I thought he was going to play a, a large, a much larger part. Not only in this movie, I thought he was going to play a larger part in the trilogy mm -hmm. in a whole. Yeah. And in a sense, all he really did in this movie, besides like like trying to look like Hugh Hefner in, in his smoking jacket. Oh, that um, was a nice jacket. A little guy. I really jacket. wanted that. But all he did was really just uh, manipulate Kylo and Rey. That's all he really did. And he's supposed to be this grand, you know, master who's been around for to see the Empire grow and fall and everything. And essentially all he really did, yeah. did in the first two movies we saw him in was talk to Ben, 
apparently he did train him and manipulate him at the beginning, but then all he did was manipulate Ray and and Ben, and that was it. So I thought that was, there was a there was a opportunity to use him a lot more. Oh yeah. I'm and like, who is this guy? Like, where, where did he come from? Yeah. We don't know anything don't about know any, him. But, but we don't need to know anything really about him to, for him to be more of a menace and a presence. I like, mean, the Emperor yeah, I guess. was a presence. Yeah. Even though we didn't know a lot about him at the time when we saw him in mm -hmm. um, Empire and the Return of the Jedi. We learned more in the prequels. Yeah. But he was just a presence and a force. And I don't feel like Snoke... He was kind of built up that way, but never really materialized to anything. Even the way he went out was just kind of like anticlimactic. Like, we're really? Trying, man. Yeah, I mean, so that wasn't. I did like that scene though, yeah, uh, but because I, that was that was well as well. Oh yeah, Kylo's gonna kill his master! Like, yay! But the way they set it up was like, yeah, we like. I see it coming. I just thought they could have played it a little bit differently because just like, yes, you see him like moving his hand, and he's like, like, already see what's gonna happen. Yeah. And for him not to see it, or maybe he did see it, and he's just like, that's gonna help him go more to the dark side. Who the hell knows? I don't know. Well, let me just talk really quickly about this connection that Ray and Kylo had. And mm. like I said, for like the third time now, I like that they're doing new things with the Force. Yeah. That was cool. But I hated that it was Snoke doing it. I wanted it to just be some inexplicable that, that would later be explained maybe in the third one yeah. as to why they're connected. But now it was just Snoke doing, you know, doing whatever. It just fell completely flat, and I was so sad. I, th I thought maybe it was going to be, oh, they actually are connected in yeah. some way. What does this mean? But no, they're really not. Well, um, we still don't know, and, and plus that connection remained at the, which they, at the end. They still how, saw each other. I guess yeah. I guess Snoke just opened the gate. Maybe way yeah. for them to telepathically communicate, which is cool. But I didn't like that it was him manipulating them, I, cause, because it made it feel like. You know, I would have liked them to come to those conclusions on their own, you know, instead of yeah. being manipulated. But I think I he, like, he, I guess from his point of view, it's like, well, I'm just going to trick her to think they're still good at him um, so that she can come to me and I can manipulate her and try to turn her. I think oh, well, that's... I, no, I know why, but, but I didn't like that. I, 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 I liked it, but I just wish they would have did more with it. Like, yeah. just go f deeper with into his character because, again, he really didn't do that much even though... You know, he looks, he, you didn't like the way he looked, I, I didn't bother me at all, but... Oh my god, like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Just put some makeup on, it, it, it's a human <laughs> face, albeit like maybe a little twisted, just like put some freaking latex on the guy, like, it's not that hard. It, he, yeah. he looked too C CGI, he looked too smooth, it does, it's not scary, it's not menacing. Well, I don't, I don't think he's supposed to look scary or menacing, it just... Um, or real. Like, if you get Andy Serkis, and Andy Serkis is the master of mocap, He's gonna be a mocap character, so that didn't really bother me. I, again, I just wish they would have done more with him. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I feel like they. I don't know. That was dumb. Um, let's talk about Finn. Okay. Um, Finn didn't do much in this film. He really no. didn't. I mean, for me, I think he was the counterbalance to Poe in the sense that I think Poe and Finn started out in the exact same place but then Poe kind of evolved into not just a hero he became a leader whereas Finn is still just a, he a hero yeah where in the sense that he's just gonna do whatever is good in the moment and not look at the grand picture of everything uh, I think they were that's why they got along so well at the beginning in the in Force Awakens because they're both heroes but then now Leia is trying to say like no you have to be more than that you're capable of more you're a leader, and then he evolved him in, into a leader. Now I think he's going to lead the resistance going forward, and then Finn is now going to be the gunner, the hot shot, the thing like, I'm just going to jump into X-Wing now and just start doing things and not worrying about the grand scale now. Whereas Poe's going to be like, no, 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 no. We have to just, like take a, a step back, look at the bigger picture and but figure out what But doesn't that feel do. redundant? Like, if they do that dynamic again? Well, I think, like, I don't want to see that again. Well, I think because, uh, like, obviously we're not going to have Carrie Fisher to play that, like, leadership role. That's where Poe's coming in. Well, and that's I think fine, we still but need they don't need to write that rebellion. They, don't may, they may not have to, but I think that's where it's going. Care. Where I think this, we still need a Han-type, like, rebellious, like, I'm just going to do whatever I think is right in the moment type character. And I think Finn is now going to be that. Maybe, but he definitely just didn't do much in this. No, film. he no. didn't. He, he didn't really have much of an arc 
Um, no, no, and I don't think he was supposed he, to. A little bit, you know, because he it, we, he starts off like running away, and then he bucks up, and he's more brave, and he's like, okay, I guess I'm a part of this. Thing. Well, no, he's just doing but what he just thinks so is right little... in the moment. Like, hey, I'm just gonna get this. Be I gotta get out of here because I don't want Ray to come here. Yeah. So I'm just gonna do again in the moment what yeah. I think is right. Well, his goal. I don't think his goal is what's right. I think his goal is to protect and save Ray and yeah. to be able to see her again. Like that. That yeah. is what he cares about. Even though he's stuck in friend zone with her, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it happens. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think his motivation is not, he's not there yet necessarily with um, doing it for the greater good or whatever. I think he really just cares about Ray. And yeah. like that's his motivation and yeah. doing, literally doing anything. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I feel. I don't know, I don't feel like I have much to say about Finn, no, to be honest. But I, I, I like, John Boyega is a very good actor, and I think yeah. he, did with, he did a good job in it. But I, again, I don't think his character is had an arc to say I agree with you, just no, kind of so like not quite he's he's there, gonna but... bounce off now Poe I think now even yeah. more so going forward. Right. Well, you know this is a trilogy, and so we probably will get a very different Finn from what we started with in Force Awakens. So yeah. you know he his arc probably will, you know, go across the three films. Uh, mm -hmm. Just just in this one, it wasn't feeling. It, so. And then without you can't talk about Finn without talking about Captain Phasma. So, like, we get Gwen and Chris back. Even less to say about that. Um, again, so, going into this movie, I thought there was going to be a lot more... Like, for me, everybody in The Force Awakens was like, oh, they wasted her character. For me, I felt like, no, 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 no. They set... All that movie was to set her up so that in the next movie, they would do a lot more with it because we know... We got, we got to know her a little bit, and we were going to explore her more in this one. And it womp, womp. Di that didn't happen again. <laughs> no. Um, no it, was, it was nice. I don't think she died. I don't think she died. It was nice to see her fight with with Finn, even though it was very brief. It was nice to see him, him her calling him scum. And like, no, I'm rebel scum. I, I just like don't that. care. I but, just don't care. She's I, it's just worthless. I mean, really worthless. I just think like you get an actress like Gwendolyn Christie, if we all love her from Game of Thrones, Give her something more to chew on. And I love the idea of a female stormtrooper. Too. Yes, like with, that's with special awesome. armor that, like, yeah. well, why is if this are bouncing off of her? Why doesn't everybody have that? But put that aside. Like I like, especially if she if she has to come back now. She can't be dead because then I think with her like uh, her mask being damaged and we see we got a glimpse of her, her face. Um, I'm me. What I'm thinking that what's gonna happen is she's gonna be in the third one, and we're, she's not gonna have the helmet on. And I think we're, we're finally gonna see more of her. That just might be me, hopefully thinking, but I'm just thinking they're gonna do more with her. Still. Also wishful thinking. If that is true and they're doing more with her, the way I can see it going is that moment where you she there was fear, like genuine fear when he, she you know she you yeah know, the thing. She's probably maybe gonna start seeing things from Finn's side. Maybe. And then she's going to be the one, because I, I can't see how they're going to end this, or it's just going to be Rebellion and Empire or First Order over and over and over and over. And we'll where see. does it end? But if it comes from within, you know, like with the captain actually sort of afraid and being like, you know what, you're right, like this sucks. Like that people are dying and what are we doing here? Like she might actually... I mean that would actually be really cool. Well, if they because did that. like if they I, had her turn to the good side and well, because she used, she's she's got out. great a uh, admiration for for Finn because mm -hmm. it's not really explained a lot in the movies, but in the backstory, mm -hmm. Finn was one of her pri prized pupils. She had a lot of of uh, prize and faith in Finn. Mm -hmm. That's why when he didn't fire um, in the movie Force Awakens, when she comes to him and says, "Get your laser uh, inspected." Because yeah. I was, there's no way you wouldn't have shot. Yeah. Because you know, you, I think you're going to be a great stormtrooper. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of, she had a lot of hope in him, and for her to see him turn, she was really disappointed. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe not also in him, maybe in herself, because like she didn't see that coming at all. Well, she's she failed as a master too. Absolutely. So I think maybe it, they, I'm hoping they bring her back because there's more, there's a lot more they can do with her. Yeah, and I because think, they haven't done a lot with her since. Yeah, and you know, I really hope that that's the way they. I, I hope that's the way. I hope the first order crumbles from within, and I think that is gonna be how it happens I if hope it so. if it does. Um, what else? Uh, we really talk, touched on. We talked about. Uh, did you talk about Kylo enough? Who? Um, Ben. Oh, Kylo. I thought you said cow, and I'm like, and then her was reminded of Luke getting the milk, the green milk. Uh, from no, the blue milk. Blue. Well, it was green. Well, the, it was blue. 
Whatever. So like, that's why he gave us that look like, yeah, this is where it comes from, guys. You're like, Easter egg, like, okay, that yeah, was wink, so wink. weird. I did like that puppet, though. Yeah, it looked pretty cool. Um, but, I, I, Whatever. I don't really know. I don't really don't have much to say about I it. mean, but, but for me, Kylo is not as a whiny bitch in this movie as he was in the first one. I mean, he had that little temper transform with where, where he breaks his mask. Um, but for me, it, it's not yeah, see- He still does have a temper. No, yeah, no, but he wasn't like a whiny little five-year-old about it. Like, Wah. I mean, kind of. <laughs> well, that's what he was. was shooting Luke. Yeah, well, the lasers, yeah, exactly. Fox is like, do you think you got him? You think you got him? But for me, I, he kind of evolved a little bit. I think he now, he kind of sees more of like, he seems more capable now in this movie than he did in the last one. I think he now he can be the supreme leader now. Yeah. Because I think he now truly embraces what he is. Yeah. And in the sec in the first one he was kind of wishy washy about it. And in the beginning he was still wishy washy. But I think Ray kinda of pushed him to be the man that he is now. He is a supreme leader now. He is the villain now. And he's embracing it and he's accepting it. I hate it. Um you well you may hate it, but I think that's I think that's where he's gone now and I and I like that. Embrace what you are. You're the villain. Embrace it. You're you're the supreme leader. Embrace it. As Accept long as it. as long as we have another shirtless scene, I'm. I'm oh my god! What was that for? It was for me. Fair enough, but it's like, <laughs> it's like like really? You know, I mean, I mean, you're someone? right. It was like why? And then Ray's like, well, why? But like, I, push, push I, I mean, they're setting up. A lot of people are saying that they might be setting up this like romance because they are connected, and they did for a moment. Both of them feel like they weren't alone. Yeah. And. I don't think that that feeling is going to go away for either of them anytime no. soon. And know, that, Kylo feels betrayed, Ray feels betrayed by by each other. Yeah. You know, but I don't. I don't think that feeling that connect that real like actual friendship that they built um, through these you know uh, telepathy vision vi force yeah, visions force, vi force visions. Um, or I saw someone call it. Um, uh, uh, force book messenger. <laughs> <laughs> force book messenger. <laughs> yeah, so they're communicating through force book messenger, and well, um, but I but I like that that. that so that people are saying so. I mean, the shirtless scene is for that because people are saying maybe they're setting up this kind of romance, which would or, be or it could be a triangle triangle between her, uh, Poe, oh and God, Ben. Yeah, <laughs> which would be it. interesting to see. To see, like they could be on both sides. Yeah. I don't know. I hope not, but well, we know how I feel about Kylo. I I wish they. We'll see what happens, I guess, in the third one. I was yeah. disappointed by the way that one ended. Um, you know, and it's also interesting that, you know, he had his dad's, um, he had Han's dice from the... From the Falcon. The yeah. Falcon in his hand, somehow. Ast astral, well, it was Astro Projector. Astral dice. Yeah, Astro, um, Astro dice. And, you know, I'm not quite sure what that means. If it's like a goodbye, I don't, I don't care anymore, I'm the villain now. Or if it's a, like, oh shit, I fucked up. But no, I think uh, I think before it would have been more him being wishy-washy. I think now he's just completely embraced it. Because they do dis uh, does disappear. Then, yeah. Obviously, when and then he kind of just is like, Rrr. yeah. You know, I, I think he's now he's the villain now. Like, there's no more um, anyone manipulating him anymore. No, none of that. He is now he is now the villain. I'm looking now. forward to the buddy comedy between him and Hux. Oh, him and the chemistry between those two <laughs> are incredible. Even the chemistry between Hux and Poe, yeah. especially the beginning where he's like, I'm holding. I'm so holding. That was funny. So, so, can you hear me? Some of those jokes me. were funny. There were some jokes in the film that I did not think were funny at all. They were very forced. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to go into them specifically. No. But, all right. Um, any, other, any final thoughts? I don't know. Up? I mean, I'm sure there's a million more things, but, you know, we probably need to wrap this up and start talking about it in the comments with you guys. Yeah. Um, I know that there's so many... Uh, of course, the fan theories have already started, yeah. so, you know, if you have any of those, be sure to drop those below. Um, you know, we'd love to talk about it. I want to. Oh yeah, I, I I love to talk about Star Wars because there's so many things that we could talk about in terms of where the movie's going, what they set up in this one, and JJ, he's got a interesting task on where this movie is. Is it going to take a place months later, maybe years later? Mm -hmm. Who knows? But before we depart, let's give it a score. So. Out of 10. Oh boy. Well, okay. Jurassic Park is a 10 for me. So, uh, <laughs> well, this film was hanging around somewhere around 6, 6.5. Okay. Well, uh, we'll see. Like I said, I might actually change my opinion based on what they do in the third one. Okay. Because it might actually be a really nice setup. But yeah. we'll see. How about you? Um. Now, this is interesting. And if you had asked me after we saw it the first time, I would have said maybe a 7. Mm hmm. After watching it again, and like I said, just watching it and having it soak in a lot more, I'm going to say 
a seven and a half. I know that isn't that big of a jump, um, but for me, I You're appreciate. Encroaching on Jurassic Park too. <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate it a lot more the second time, and I think you will too, if I'll if and again. when you see it again. Yeah, I will. So um, that's what we think. Um, I know this is a long review, but you know, Star Wars is there's a, so much to there's talk so much about. to talk about. But we now we want to hear you heard what we thought. We'd like to hear what you guys think. Um, again, did you like the for, the Last Jedi? Is it polarizing for you guys? Um, some fans even start a petition to get it removed oh, yeah. from canon, which is completely ridiculous and stupid. If you sign that petition, there's something wrong with you. A waste of time. B big waste of time. Disney's not even gonna like look at it twice. So if that's not even once. stupid. So um, what are you guys' thoughts? Please comment below, like, subscribe, do all those things. Um, we look forward to doing these more next year, and um, um, we're gonna have a lot more exciting things to do um, on our channel next year. I can't wait for uh, you guys to know about it, but. Um, that's for another time, but now, um, I'm Sean. I'm Alex. Happy end of 2017. We'll see you next year, and may the force be with you. Absolutely, always. It's not working. <laughs>